Hello world, this is a review of the CT50 Wi-Fi radio thermostat, which I recently upgraded from an older basic thermostat. I wanted to integrate this into my uh, Motino IoT framework and to be able to control the thermostat remotely without hacking into it or having to build my own version of a thermostat or using the default uh, cloud interface that comes with these thermostats. I don't want the company to know my habits and also I want the thermostat to be integrated with my existing automation interface. So uh, I researched and bought this thermostat because it's one of the very few that have an open API and that allows to get updates or control it via HTTP requests. And at a $100 price point, I think uh, it's a real bargain. And in the few months that I've uh, used it, it uh, didn't disappoint me. Feature-wise, uh, it has a large touchscreen, which is uh, pretty responsive and intuitive to use. It doesn't have uh, a mounting bracket like the old thermostat. Uh, I would have preferred this because it makes it easy to unmount the thermostat if you have to. So uh, this one will uh, just mount using uh, four screws which are under these uh, two covers in the four corners. It also has uh, two expansion slots which are on the sides here. And uh, the Wi-Fi version of this thermostat, which is this one, comes with a Wi-Fi module that gets inserted into one of these two uh, slots. The Wi-Fi setup was not the best I've seen and uh, the box didn't come with any instructions for that so I had to go online and look for instructional videos for how to do that uh, Wi-Fi pairing. Uh, it does support multi-stage HVAC systems which is a good feature in case you have such a system or plan to upgrade. One important difference between the old thermostat and the new one is that uh, this one needs a common C wire for the Wi-Fi to work. My older thermostat uh, uh, was wired with a four wire combination, uh, heating, cooling, fan and uh, 24 VAC and it ran virtually forever since uh, this was very basic and low power and it could use what's known as a power stealing technique to keep a large cap charged and avoid having that uh, fifth common wire. And it also had uh, backup batteries, so uh, in case power was lost, this kept going. And uh, you can see it's still running and it's been uh, disconnected for a couple months here. Like most advanced thermostats these days, uh, these Wi-Fi thermostats use a lot more power than um, such basic thermostats. And so they need that uh, common wire to be able to function and get enough power. If power is lost, the batteries uh, for this one will uh, keep it running, but uh, the Wi-Fi function will uh, stop working until power comes back on. So the common wire is really uh, essential and required for the Wi-Fi to work. Now, instead of buying a new cable uh, with more wires, which can get pretty expensive, I just decided to keep the old cable and run an extra wire next to it to get that common from the HVAC controller. If you don't have an easy way to run a new cable or uh, an extra wire, then you can use a trick. You can just sacrifice the fan wire, which is typically never used alone anyway, and repurpose that for, uh, for the common wire. Uh, then you would lose the ability to control the fan independently, but your HVAC equipment will automatically run the fan during heating or cooling anyway, so it's a good option if you have no physical means to install a new wire. To integrate the Wi-Fi thermostat into my Motino dashboard, I created a special type of thermostat node which has this polling event here. Since this is a Wi-Fi thermostat, there's no way to make it push data itself into my Motino gateway. Instead, I have to use this uh, event to periodically poll the thermostat through that REST API to refresh all these metrics. This new node also has a bunch of sample controls that I've defined. Uh, which allow you to send commands and change things like uh, the mode, the target, the temperature, etc. And this makes it really convenient to control uh, the thermostat remotely when you're in bed at night or when you're away and uh, want to come back home to a nice warm place without having to run uh, heating or cooling all the time. Okay, so let's check it out and see how responsive this is. Um, right now the target temperature is 71 degrees. You can also see that right here. Uh, and let's turn it off. 
you may notice there's a slight delay before the interface updates. Uh, the initial request to the thermostat is uh, received and executed right away, but it's the response back to the interface that takes uh, two or three seconds. Let's turn it back on and I'll use this heat 73 degrees button. You saw how, how quickly that updated and uh, the interface will still take two or three seconds for that reply from the thermostat. The thermostat can of course be used independently of the home automation interface and that's where the polling event comes into play and keeps this interface and the gateway in sync with whatever the thermostat is doing. Here are some teardown photos. Uh, this is what came in the box along with the booklet that's not shown here. This is the backside with the expansion slots and the Wi-Fi module. This is with the front cover taken off. You can see the relays that are actually slatching relays and they activate the different stages of the HVAC equipment. This is a look at what's under the LCD on the main PCB. The main MCU is a PIC18F66 and there are two switching converters. One that provides the main DC voltage from the 24 volt AC input and another presumably lower voltage for the Wi-Fi. I did a little tracking of those two expansion slots and I determined that they use a shared SPI bus and the Wi-Fi module can go in either one. And here's the front and back of the Wi-Fi module PCB. Let's see some install detail photos. This is the old thermostat wiring. Remember, if you don't have the ability to run a new wire for common, then you can just repurpose the existing fan wire for that. This is where I added a new cable to bring the required common wire. I have a basement and I had to make a hole under the wall with the thermostat to insert the new cable. And it was a little tricky to get that cable through without making more damage. But with a little patience, it worked out okay. This is how I connected my common wire to the HVAC controller. And here I'm testing the wiring to make sure it powers up and the Wi-Fi works. This is how it looks on the wall. You'll notice the empty slot is visible from the side, but you can cover that with a white tape and it'll look fine. Other than that, it looks good and I'm pretty happy with it. That's about it. You can probably create more controls and add more interface functionality to what I've already done. Uh, the API is pretty extensive and allows you to control the thermostat at a very low level. All resources and any relevant code are published at my blog and the thermostat functionality is already available in the latest Raspberry Pi image I published for the Motino Gateway. I hope you found this useful and give it a try. Catch you later.